once you've got all the pads off there's four screws at the top and then a screw in each pad at the bottom what i'm going to do is i'm going to take out a few of these screws potentially two out of the four here and then i might take some out of the rear later on this mouse, if you haven't seen my tear down, already has 36 screws in total. We're certainly going to remove a lot of those screws, even though they're very lightweight. The start of this, we'll be taking two out of the front. I'll update throughout here with the weight removed totally as we go through it at each key point. We get an idea then of how much weight we've taken out of it so far. Be careful when opening it here you don't rip the ribbons and also the longer ribbon with the clip is a little bit more delicate the pcb around there so just be careful when you're picking it up not to snap it you can certainly see all the cat hair on my mouse here that's picked up that's what you get when you get five cats baby we are going to be doing a battery mod on this so stick around as well that's part of the deal here we're going to reduce that larger battery for a smaller 100 milliamp battery This is one of the first key mods here and this is removing the magnetic clips for the power play here if you're not using the power play which is the mat here the wireless charging mat from logitech then you can take this section out to save even more weight here which is what i'm doing here It's not bad so far, five grams of weight removed with very simple mods here, nothing detrimental to the mouse. So again on this PCB when I'm screwing it, you can see it's got three screws. I'm going to leave one of the middle screws out because again, I don't see this being an issue. It's very secure in there. So you can save yourself a little bit extra weight there and this will all add up. So remember each bit we take off will eventually add up to a larger sum when we calculate it at the end. So it might seem insignificant at the minute. It won't do at the end, trust me. One of the easy ones here to move is the power button. It comes out very easily. You can switch this on and off with a screwdriver if you need to. It just pulls straight out here. So the power button will be getting removed here. I put it on the right hand side accidentally, but it will be moved out eventually. The profile button here is the first permanent change where you can't go back. You have to snap off these little springs to take the profile button out. Again, not necessarily an issue. You can still push the switch through the base if you need to. I generally use the Logitech software anyway to change the profile, so it won't be an issue for me going forward. So now just over five grams here, 5.5 grams in weight reduction. Now we start to remove the battery, we'll change this at the end. 
when we swap out the battery, we have to do some cable mod here on it to allow it to connect with the new battery. This will be later on in the video, it's not going to be now. So. Also, for this smaller battery here, that's a helicopter battery, weighs in a lot less, about two and a half grams less. So now we're going to take out this kind of skeleton shell screws and there's a lot of screws in this so at the end I'll decide how many I want to remove but for now I'm just going to put them on the right hand side and then we'll weigh them up at the end if we need to remove some more if I find the shell secure. Throughout this video I'm going to be checking the shell to see what I can and can't remove. It's kind of a feel as you go process this, for me anyway, because no one else has shown this so we're going to learn as we go stripping this mouse down. So what's starting to happen here is I'm losing a lot of the screws or I think I am but they're not actually sticking to these side right and left side button magnets. You can see me trying to get these out. So if you're trying to find them and you do it, this is where they will be. But we'll get them out as we pull the mouse apart, no problem. The left and right mouse button is secured with two screws. We're going to take one of those screws out and only put one back in. I haven't noticed the difference when I put this back together. But given the weight, you might want to put both back in. It's up to you here. On this PCB for the left and right mouse button, 
Again, there's four screws holding this in on the front here. I'm taking two of them out and they won't be going back in. Each time here, I'm just checking the bore to see how secure it is when I'm taking the screws out to see if I can get away with taking some out here. This mouse is built very well by Logitech. This has certainly got the most screws off any of the mice I've taken apart. In fact, it's crazy the amount of screws in this. So once you get all the screws out, there's another plate that holds the scroll wheel securely. At the moment, we're going to kind of decide whether we want to take that out or not. But for now, I'll put it on the right hand side. But this is a potential weight saver here. Some more screws to get rid of the shell. So I'm going to remove the right hand side buttons because I don't want these. I'm going to do this just to save a bit of extra weight because most people don't use them. I personally do. But in this mod here we're going to take them out to save a bit of weight. I'm just going to keep the left hand side ones. Once you get the skeleton shell out you can take the blue magnetic strip off. There's one on each side and they come in around 2.2 grams. So again a good bit of weight saving here if you just get rid of these. The so current weight savings around 8.8 .8 grams so far, not bad. This little cone on the back shell of the G Pro Wireless is to channel the lighting for the RGB lighting. Now this is secured on again, this is a permanent change here, you can't go back from this. For me it's not a problem, I'll just put a bit of a screwdriver in there and prise it out. But if you want this to stay, then I suggest you don't take this out. I don't personally turn on the RGB lighting because I prefer to save the battery. I tried to remove the profile light button here but these don't come out so I didn't try it too much, I didn't want to break it. So I wouldn't try to take these out yourself, there's a little bit of weight maybe here but it's not really worth it. I was just trying to uh, see if they'd come out easily with a pair of pliers. Now we've stripped down most of that shell on the skeleton, I'm looking for potential points here where I can get more weight out of it. Again we take the right hand side mouse buttons off here, 
this is a permanent change to me. What I would do here is if you want to put these back in, you could desolder them. I'm not going to here because I don't want them to go back in. I'm just going to break them off by wiggling them left and right. This doesn't stop the mouse from working. The mouse after this will still work. I'm just checking out the shell here, checking out the scroll wheel, make sure it's secure without that plate, see if I can get rid of that later. I'm looking here for points on the shell where potentially I could trim some off here and save a bit of extra weight. So I'm thinking these side points here, I've got some excess fat here that we could take off. So I'm going to trim these using these pliers. Got to be careful here not to crack too far up the chassis, which could have happened. So I was a little bit delicate there, I was a little bit lucky, it's quite thin and there's quite a lot of pressure on it. So just be careful when trimming this not to break it off completely and snap it on the whole back end of the shell here. So the shell's still secure with both of those removed here. I'm still looking for a bit of extra weight here to get off the chassis because it is quite heavy. This is where the main weight is in this Logitech G Pro Wireless. I decided to clip off this rear section here. Now what I wouldn't do here, this again is a permanent change here as well as the side pieces that we've just taken off, is what I realized here is I've made a mistake. I'll show you in a bit where that mistake is. I would chop off this rear piece. This is where the most of the weight is, but I wouldn't chop out those side pieces if this is the modification you want to do or decide between either the rear or the inner side pieces. You can't do both here. Well, you can, but I wouldn't advise it. And you'll see why in a bit. Put in the comments if you know why. Dropping away all that chassis really is giving us 
an extra gram in weight for me i don't think that's worth it but i'm trying to save as much as i can here We're up to a nice 12 grams of weight saving here, so we're doing pretty well. Now it's time to trim the base. Now this is where the button is. I say we're not using the power play here, so we can trim all of this excess plastic out. This is not some of my finest camera work here. You can see the camera struggling because I'm moving around quite a lot and I'm trying to look at the same time and moving it, but just keep chopping away the bits inside of that button so you can chop out the entire part it takes a little bit of effort but this is definitely worth doing There's a screw mounting point on the rear pad here that I've left and I've left all the structure in place because I want to screw back to that. That's my plan. You know, it's a mistake yet. And you could remove that if you chopped out the rear of the skeleton, which obviously I've done. We're here to keep working around this circle. Once you've done that it's nice and smooth here you've got a nice bit of weight saving on this chassis here this chassis was 10 grams put all the bits on the scales there there's certainly a lot of them and we've trimmed out a nice 2.2 grams here of weight Now we part the drill here. I'm not going to drill all the shell here. I'm just going to drill the base. I'm trying to drill just in front of the sensor here, just so I can start chopping away at that extra bit of plastic. Now I don't have the right drill bit here, but it works for that purpose. You probably want to get a slightly better drill bit here. And I'm not using anything really to secure it. I'm using Logitech G Pro case here. You do see that it dents the case. i drills into it. That's why I did it on there, so not to damage my desk. So just be careful when drilling in here. Open the doors to the 
we need to do now is work out all this plastic in front of this sensor here and making sure you still keep the mounting points again it takes a little bit of time here and it can be a little bit rough just keep working at it Once all that's trimmed out, for me it was a little bit rough, so I pulled out a file here and just tried to sand it down a little bit so it doesn't snag on the mouse pad or anything when I'm using it. It's well worth doing. Didn't save that much here drilling out that and scraping it out. We saved about half a gram here in weight. Again, is it worth it? Well, like we say, it all adds up. The shell's now down to six grams here or 6.3 grams. So not bad so far. Took four grams off that base plate. So now we're up to a saving of 15 grams here. So we're getting nice, we're down to 65 grams in weight so far, looking good.
what I've decided here is the plate in front of the scroll wheel I don't think it's needed the scroll wheel is very secure it doesn't really lift up this plate on top is meant to secure it the plate's about 1.1 grams so on the scrap pile it goes again the scroll wheel to me is secure there's no issue here really it's just Logitech trying to be a bit cautious putting the mouse buttons left and right back in this time I'm only putting one screw in there again you can put two screws in if you want if you're not too sure I've had no issues here and they feel pretty secure but I know some people do have some wobble issues here so if you do are a bit prone to that I'd certainly put the two back in Now what you'll notice is on the blue magnetic plate I don't put any screws in it that's because this thing is rock solid in there I know that because when I did the teardown video I could not get it out until I fully pulled out the skeleton so I'm not putting any screws in here at all now when using it they do feel a little bit more mushy I would say to be fair I've had a bit more time with it but to me I think they're definitely worth leaving out there's no real major change here you'll notice throughout the rest of this shell now that I don't put many screws back in it that's because this thing is tight in there I personally don't think you need to put that many screws in it, but let's see if it rattles in a bit. So now it's time for the battery mod. This you're gonna need a soldering iron. You have to work out the length of the cables here. Be careful here, I managed to nick the cable. And I managed to strip it a little bit short, so I had to play around here. And you'll see how to put the battery in the rear of the mouse. If you want it in the original position, you're gonna to have to get a bit of a longer wire here. It takes a little bit of time just to get the fitting right here for the battery and to work out the distance across.
But baby, I'm here and I'm watching you move. There's just one thing you should know. Girl, you are my fire. So now when I'm putting the shell back together, I notice that the screws aren't going in here on the rear pads. And that's because we chopped out the two rear center pieces and the whole rear section. As I've said here, that's a catastrophic mistake from my end here because now the shell won't go back together without any screws. I do manage to work it around here with some M3 tape and you could super glue it to be fair. But if you want to be able to screw the shell back together, you have to decide between either the rear one or the two side ones. You can only cut one of those options out the rear skeleton. So just be careful when you're doing that or you can work around it like I have anyway and save a bit more weight. Totally planned. So you'll see here once the M3 tape's in place, I can shake it, rattle it, it still stays together. So the M3 tape is holding out and I've had no issues with it when I've been playing with it, but some people might potentially not want to do that and you might at least put one of the screws in the rear, it's up to you.
you notice here I end up with a load of screws at the end here and I'm like right okay well I don't need any of them so they're all going to go in the scales because we're going to use them that's a lot of screws man but again no rattles no squeaks I've got no issues with it whatsoever so why put them back in this just goes to show how light the screws are at 0.6 grams 0.7 grams here of weight saved by all them screws so if you're leaving some in it i don't think it's really going to cause you an issue with any weight here so i'm just taking out as much as i can like i say let's put the skates back on it And that's it the mod is complete you can see here it's still looking like a mouse you could put the protective plates on the side there on the right hand side to cover those holes to me my finger doesn't touch them so it's no issue it doesn't bother me but it doesn't look the tidiest you could again put the blanking plates on there just to make it look a bit tidier You can see here it's the scales are showing we saved 20 grams you've got to include the extra two and a half grams in the battery here that we are not removing because obviously we swapped the battery out so it's more like 20 grams of weight reduction here all the weight reduction means the mouse is now 60 gram logitech g pro wireless and it still looks pretty normal i think not a bad mod quite a bit of effort certainly some options where we can't go back here that's certainly some permanent changes so here we have it the 60 gram logitech g pro wireless I think it's turned out pretty well. I think it still looks like a mouse, which is surprising. I mean, granted, we've chopped some of the bottom off. I did make a few little mistakes. I certainly chopped away too much of the inside plate, which stopped me being able to secure the back of the mouse here. I had to use some M3 tape. If I had a choice going back, because obviously it's not reversible, I could glue it, I guess. I would have still trimmed out the very, very back one, because that's where the most weight is, and left the two side pieces that I did originally. We did have a bit of an issue with the battery and we've relocated it further back. Does that distribute the weight differently? No, I can't tell the difference on it whatsoever. I'm not sure how long the battery is going to be. This is a 100 milliamp battery now, not a 500. But the 500 was ridiculously good anyway and would last me a month. So maybe I'll get a week out of this. Certainly going to be some compromise here in battery life though. There's a few other compromises. One is the profile button. You could reach in here with a small pen or screwdriver and you can change the profile i personally never use that button anyway i would do it within the logitech software which you can still do and then the other one is the power button that you can again reach in and switch it on or off and for me again not an issue because mine's always on anyway can i tell the difference now between the standard and this one i certainly can on my new one i've got a new logitech g pro wireless i can definitely see that difference here one of the things I probably wouldn't do my personally myself is I wouldn't take out the right mouse buttons. This again is a bit of a permanent change. You could have desoldered them. I didn't because I don't really want to put them back in anyway. If you want to put them back in though, you could desolder them and I would recommend that. But it's a little bit trickier. Other than that, I wouldn't change anything else. I think we chopped out enough plastic. It was interesting to see we could take out the plate that holds in the scroll wheel. Is that now jumping around? No. Does it rattle the mouse? No. Bottom come out? No. The scroll wheel move? No. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with the mod. Some catastrophic changes to it. You certainly can't go back from this. I wouldn't recommend doing it because you're never going to be able to RMA it. I've done it here purely because, well, I thought it'd be good to try. And a lot of people have been asking for it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that like button if you want to see stage two here. And we're going to trim out some more weight off the top shell. I don't think we're going to get too much additional weight off it. Maybe a couple more grams here. Personally, this would be where I would take it to if I was doing the mods myself, which I am doing. But if I was doing it for my own preference, I've got a brand new Logitech Pro G Pro Wireless. Although I'd probably use this if I could have had the right hand side button still. Hope you enjoy this. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you again soon. Catch you later. Bye bye.